G'day everyone, welcome back to Fix It and Post. My name is Nick. All right, so t just a quick one for today. I just thought that this is just something that I don't think everybody kind of knows uh, how to set up basically when you get into After Effects for the first time. You've made your beautiful project, uh, Frankie here, coming at you and taking a bite out of you. And you thought, you know what, I want to render this out and send it to my client or put it on Instagram, whatever you want to do. You want to get it out of After Effects, but how do you do that? Where do you go? Right. So firstly, just make sure you've got your comp selected. It's either you've got your either your your self selected in here or you've got the project selected up here, which is that one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go file, export, and then go add to render queue or media encoder. But in this case, I'm going to show you how to do the render queue uh, technique first. So we're going to go add to render queue. Hey guys, just a quick side note here. If you use the render queue, it means you don't have to open up another program, but it means that when it starts rendering, it's actually going to hold up your program so you can't use After Effects for anything else while it's rendering. However, if you do send it to Media Encoder, it will mean that you are able to still keep working in After Effects while Media Encoder is going. Although, I will admit, Media Encoder is a beast at taking up all your memory, so it's probably not the best to send things to Media Encoder if your project is really chunky. All right, back to the video. All right, so this is what will come up. Now, this render queue here um, usually comes in, if you haven't actually done this before, it'll actually come as this. This is probably what it'll come up with as your default. Now, you want to change some of these things because uh, you would like it to actually go to a particular codec that you like. Lossless is a bit of an out of date codec in my opinion. I'm not really sure why it is set as the default, but it is. So let's go change that. So what you would do is you go down here. We'll go to the output module and we'll go down to make template. Now, when you open it up, this will be the default setting, movie default and frame default. Uh, movie default is set to lossless and frame default is set to Photoshop. Now, what you need to do is go in here and go to settings name and then make your own uh, preset. So let's make it ProRes demo. And then we'll go into edit and then we'll change the format from animation. We'll go to format options here and we'll change it to ProRes, whatever you like. I'm going to pick 422 LT because that's nice and light, but it's still pretty good. And we'll go and set everything else the same. You can keep the audio on if you like, but you don't have to and then go OK. And then what we'll do is go up here and we'll go to movie default and go to Pro ProRes and whatever one you just made. I already have one set up, but you go to ProRes Demo, and that'll be your default. And then you press OK. So now, when you do actually send stuff to the queue, this will be the default that it will go for, and which is fantastic. All right, so we also have render settings as well. So make sure that is set to best. Best is what you want always, because current settings can be... If it's current settings and for whatever reason you've set it on quarter resolution to view in, it'll actually render in quarter resolution, which is not what you want. So if we go back to the render queue, you can see here that we can actually do this exactly the same thing. We'll make our own template. And then we have to we actually set was well, actually set at movie default set to best. But if it's on current settings, set it to best and just press OK. And now every time you do load up a new project, uh, every time you do render something, it'll go to best settings and ProRes or whatever your default is as the default. And now finally, we're gonna set where the output is gonna go to. And so we just click in there and you just pick something in your folder and it'll just send it to there. And what's great about that is if you have more than one thing you need to render, if you set that up in the first one, it'll actually propagate into all the ones subsequently so that it'll just keep rendering to the same folder. So that's really useful if you've got to do a batch task. Um, and that's really cool because you can batch task things over and over again. So for example, if I wanted to render this one as well, um, it'll actually send it to the same folder again and keep all those settings as well. And then once you're ready to go, just press render and you'll see this little blue bar build up a little bit of a preview window in here. Everything's looking pretty good. And then you hear this lovely sound at the end. And that is it. And then just go to your file and see what you got. Now, for example, if you don't want to use ProRes as your format 
and you actually want to embrace some of the other codecs within media encoder because i can imagine some of you are thinking you know what i just want to skip the whole prores process and go straight to mp4 which you know is possible i wouldn't recommend it i, rec I recommend always having a prores version on file but if you want to do it through media encoder you can so we're going to upload media encoder we're going to open media encoder right now um, the render engine has improved significantly. So if you're just looking for pure speed and you know you don't have to keep a ProRes file anywhere, then sure, go straight for, for Media Encoder. Uh, it does make the render process a little bit longer, but you can get a final output, uh, output a little bit quicker. So here's Media Encoder right here. Nothing is in the queue, as you can see, which is completely fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select our comp again. And this time, rather than go to export, we're going to go file and then export to Adobe Media Encoder. We'll just wait a second. We'll just wait a second. There we go. Here it is. <laughs> It takes a little bit of time to think about where it needs to do, but it does do it eventually. All right, so we've got all the settings pretty much the same here. Um, it's a little bit different to the After Effects renderer. So right now, if you wanted to go straight to an MP4, you can just pick H.264, uh, whatever bitrate you want, and then obviously set it to where you want to render it, which we've got it pretty much in the same place um, as we did before. So we can just go, a we got AE exports and we'll just save it there. And then that is pretty much it. You've got, if you're familiar with, um, if you are familiar with Premiere, this is pretty much the same thing. You click in here and actually look at the different settings that you can pick. So if you want to change the uh, uh, the pixel, sorry, if you want to change the frame rate or you want to ch change the, um, the bit rate or any of those sort of things, you can do that in here. It's very familiar. It's very similar to the Premiere exporter. And then just press OK. You can even pick one of the presets, whatever you like here, or you can just pull the pull down menu here and just pick one of the presets here as well. There are a lot of presets here. Um, again, there's also all these presets here. You can even go QuickTime. Uh, you even have some of the presets. You can actually set some of the presets here. Uh, these are all related to um, pre Premiere's presets. So you won't have these set up by default. They don't take on any of the presets from um, After Effects. So just keep that in mind. So if we were to do that, but just say we want to go straight to X364 and then we just go up here and press play. Now it's going to start rendering. Now, if you want to stop for whatever reason, this is a weird thing. It's not particularly intuitive. If you press stop here, it just, you have to read this carefully. You have chosen to stop the queue. Would you like to finish the current file before the queue stops? Now you have to press no if you just want it to immediately end. Because it sounds like what it's asking you and what you would thought the question would be is, do you want to just stop the render? is the question but it's actually asking you do you want to finish the file before you start the before you stop the render and if you just want to immediately stop it you have to press no that was confusing to me the last time maybe it's something i want to talk to adobe about don't know if they'll listen to me but anyway that, that's just something that i thought was quite funny so that is it guys i hope that has helped you um it's something that I had to explain to somebody and I know that it's not particularly intuitive the first time you have to render something out of After Effects, but there you go. That is it in a nutshell. Let me know if you would like to know any other tips. I'm going to post a few more tips on how to render other things as well. And guys, come over and check my IG page. It's NickBenQ underscore motion for all these things that I'm posting. Experiments and stuff you might not actually see on the YouTube channel. Plus just some funny things that I just like to post. Memes, etc. You guys are the best and I'll see you next time. And guys, a whole bunch of you out there are not subscribed to the channel, but you are watching the videos. So do me a favor, just click the subscribe button. It will just take a second. And if you don't like what you're watching, then just unsubscribe. It's pretty much that easy.